Let's go. It's your man, Mike Bowens, coming to you once again, live and direct. Listen, I'm coming to you with another powerful message. This message is entitled Emergency Preparation Part 2. Now, I, I brought this message before about emergency preparedness, and I'm saying emergency preparation part two, right? I want to say to you, with the spirit of Joseph, now Joseph in the Bible, you know, God was giving him dreams and visions of how he should store up food because you never know when um, there might come a famine on the land. And you got to understand, there's a lot of wicked people in this world that's behind the scenes that's working to orchestrate the demise of America, the demise of the of the world and to cause people to be in dire astray. What do I mean by that? Now I'm going into the stores and I'm seeing that they're saying there's a coin shortage. If you don't have the exact amount of change, then you can't buy this item, you can't buy that item. And I saw it a long time ago how has God has been warning his people to prepare for this time, to prepare that you are not caught off guard. By that I mean, do you have a generator in your house? Do you have food preparation in your house? Have you sat down with your family and planned exit strategies if you have to leave the house, right? Have you sat down and, and, and really prayed and asked God to give you understanding and give you wisdom for the time that we're in? What if you go to the bank and you can't get your money out the bank? What if um, all the power goes out and the only way for you to heat up food is with a propane heater? And if you don't have one, what you're gonna do? What if all the stores shut down for a moment in time? Maybe a week, two weeks, three weeks, I don't know. But do you have food to cover you during that time? Did you put yourself in a situation See, we're so used to things are the way they always have been. But I'm going to tell you, things are never going to be the way that they once were. It's not going to happen. And I don't mean to be a doom and gloom type person. Anybody knows me, I'm ultra positive. But I believe in being prepared even when things look like everything is, is all right. And some people call that being a prepper. Whatever you want to call it. It's the same way as you're going through life, you should prepare, like say you're a married couple, you should prepare for retirement. You don't just go through life. Before you go back to school, you should prepare yourself to go back to school, right? You, you should always prepare yourself in different areas of life because you never know what's coming. You can't just live life, que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. And Jesus warns us of these things. He said in the last days, there shall be pestilence. There shall be famine. There shall be earthquakes. Right? Nation shall rise against nation. Right? These things shall happen in various places. And so you want to put yourself in a position that you're best prepared that you can. Right? Are you going to be able to prepare for everything? No. But you can do your best to prepare yourself and your family for the things that's in your power to control, right? And so, do you have adequate water supply? What if the water shuts down? What if the water is contaminated for some odd reason? Do you have enough water to last that you can bathe with, that you can drink with, that you can cook with? Do you have candles in case it's a blackout? Do you have candles, right? You may not be able to get a generator, but do you have candles? Do you have flashlight with batteries? Right? Do you have extra blankets? Do you have heaters? Right? Propane heaters, in case the power goes out, you still can turn them on and, and light it up and, and keep yourself and your family warm for a period of time. Are you thinking the what ifs? Right? And God wants us to think proactive. I have so many people that are still writing me, you know, about daycare and things of that nature. And I'm okay with that. I'm going to actually do a video on, on that right right after I finish this one but and I and I talked to so many people and they're just like you know once this this virus passes or whatever you know I'm just gonna go you know things it's just, I'm just hoping it's gonna pass and, and and everything's gonna get back to the way that it once was but there's gonna be another wave after this one another virus and then what are you gonna say like oh my gosh 
things are, it's going to take a little bit more time for it to get back to the way that it was. You got to be proactive. You got to see into the future. You got to ask God to give you vision, give you understanding to know what you should do in the times and the season that you're in. Should you panic? No. You want to be like the ver. You want to be like the wise uh, versions, the ones who had their oil, had their lamps prepared, ready. You don't want to be the foolish virgins who didn't have oil in their lamps. That means they had the anointing of the spirit, but they was prepared for what was coming. So when things um, got crazy, they was prepared while the other people were scrambling last minute trying to get things. You don't want to be a person that's scrambling. You want to be a person that's prepared. You want to be a person that's doing things ahead of time. And a lot of people still going shopping. They get they got money from the government. You went out and buy flat screen TVs, clothes and shoes and all this type of stuff. What are you doing? Nothing happens just to happen. You got to think ahead and say, dang, if they're giving us this money, what should I do with this money? God, what should I do with this money, this extra money? Should I take it and just put it in the bank? Should I take it and just buy clothes, buy shoes, put some rims on my car? What should I do with this money? And so being prepared means that in case of emergency, what if, have you ever thought about, and I think about these things, what if all the supermarkets shut down for two months? You can't get to a grocery store. You can't get to a dollar store. Everything is shut down. How will you survive for those two months? What would you do? And I'm talking hypothetically, but it's a possibility that that could happen, right? As we know, election time is coming up and it's, it's, a, it's a battle going on in the spiritual realm. It's a battle. And people are on 10 right now. And one other thing is going to set people off and it could get so bad where deliveries can't be made to the grocery store because people fighting in the street. So mad. So I would suggest you pick a room, you pick a closet, something like that, and you begin to store up what you need. This may sound crazy to some people. This may be a revelation for others. But wherever you are, the thing I would say is you pray and you ask God what you should do for you and your household. And I pray that you become or you, you utilize the wisdom as a wise version as opposed to an unfoolish version so that you're not caught off guard when things happen that you never expected. This is your man, Mike Bowens. I'm signing off until next time saying be. Bless.